It's Tim Sheets for TechSpot here, and this is the ASUS ZenBook 3, or should I say, the ASUS MacBook. This thin and light ultra portable shares a number of similarities with Apple's offering in this space. However, ASUS has packed in a bit more performance, so it could be the better option if you're looking for an extremely portable laptop. The most striking thing about the ZenBook 3 is the design. However, ASUS has clearly lifted some design elements from the MacBook. The edge-to-edge -edge keyboard, the wedge shape to the chassis, the use of metal all around, and even that cutout below the trackpad are all things you'll find on Apple's offering. However, that isn't necessarily the biggest issue because the MacBook is a beautiful design and imitating it in the ZenBook has produced a fantastic product from a design perspective. I was impressed with the portability of the ZenBook 3. It's a 12.5 inch laptop with reasonably slim bezels, allowing it to occupy around the same footprint as my Dell XPS 13. However, it is a lot lighter at 910 grams and it's just under 12 millimeters thin. So it's one of the thinnest and lightest laptops of its class on the market. And I'm sure ASUS is happy because those numbers are just slightly smaller than the Apple MacBook. And we know that ASUS likes to beat its competitors like that. There are some trade-offs that have been introduced into the design because it is so thin and light. And the first one is the keyboard. The travel distance on this keyboard isn't great and that doesn't give you very good tactile feedback. I love the fact that it's an edge-to-edge -edge keyboard, the layout is fantastic, but typing on it just doesn't give the same satisfying experience that I get from another thin and light laptop, the HP Spectre, which I think has one of the best laptop keyboards I've used recently. The ZenBook also includes just one USB-C port, and I have no idea why ASUS imitated this feature of the MacBook. I understand you're not gonna be able to fit a full-size USB port in a design this thin, but having just one USB port means that if you want to charge this laptop and use an accessory, you're going to need to buy a dongle. If you want to use multiple accessories, you're gonna to need to buy a dongle. And if you want to use, say, charging and a mouse and an external display, you're gonna to need to buy some sort of hub, let alone just a dongle. I mean, the inclusion of just one port makes no sense. You should have at least two or even better three ports like on the HP Spectre, which would significantly improve the usability of this laptop. And I firmly believe there's enough space on this design to include at least two ports. You do get a 3.5 mil headphone jack, which is great to see. And the single USB-C port is Thunderbolt 3 compatible. So it's very fast and can support a number of different devices through dongles. But if you're willing to buy the ZenBook 3, you'll have to be happy entering dongle life. ASUS has made some other interesting design choices, namely the positioning of the fingerprint sensor. Don't get me wrong, I love the inclusion of a fingerprint sensor here because you can use it with Windows Hello for securing your laptop. It's fast, it's easy to use, but I don't understand why they put it inside the trackpad. It would make a lot more sense to put this fingerprint sensor near the power button, which is what other laptops with fingerprint sensors do, but the awkward positioning in the trackpad kind of reduces the size and usability of the trackpad somewhat. That said, the actual trackpad is quite good. It's got a very nice clicky mechanism, it tracks well, it's responsive, and I love the glass feel to it, but please, ASUS, move the fingerprint sensor somewhere else. Also, you're not going to get a large battery inside the ZenBook due to the quest to make it so thin. I typically got about six hours of usage out of this device and I would have preferred to see more like eight hours from a laptop of this size. And for a similar reason, you're not going to find a touchscreen on the ZenBook. There is a glossy display which gives the illusion that it's a touchscreen, but there's no touchscreen option to be found. That said, I quite like the display. It's a 1080p 12.5 inch IPS LCD. It is very vibrant. It can go up to around 340 nits of brightness, which I think is perfectly fine. There is some awkward and unusual dynamic contrasts that's going on somewhere here. You cannot disable that, which makes it not the best option for creative professionals that demand, say, sRGB color accuracy. But I think for most everyday users, you'll be very pleased with the vibrant and saturated results that the ZenBook 3's display provides. And this brings me to the best feature of the ZenBook 3, its performance. With the 12-inch MacBook, Apple opted for an Intel Skylake Core M CPU, which does provide the best performance due to its 4.5 watt power envelope. However, with the ZenBook 3, ASUS has gone with a full 15 watt Intel Kaby Lake processor, which is their latest generation Core i CPUs. 
In the ZenBook 3, you get the choice of either the Core i5-7200U or the i7-7500U, and the 7500U is the model that I've got in my review unit. There's also an option of either 8 or 16 gigabytes of RAM and 256 or 512 gigabyte of storage, and I've got both the 8 gig and 512 gigabyte model with me today. The performance of the KB Lake CPU is fantastic for a laptop that's so thin and light. You're not going to see significant performance gains over the previous generation. I saw around a 7% improvement compared to the Core i7-6500 use. That's the previous generation equivalent Skylake part to what's in my ZenBook 3. And this is mostly down to mere clock speed improvements. So the i7 7500U is clocked 200 megahertz high on the base clock and 400 megahertz high on the single core turbo frequency. And that provides most of the performance improvements here. Because simply put, KB Lake is mostly the same as Skylake. There is no major architectural changes and it's still using the 14 nanometer processing node that Skylake was on. That said, Intel has made some improvements to the 14 nanometer process they're using here, which provides efficiency improvements. So they can provide this bit of extra performance within the same power envelope as the previous generation processors. But it's not a significant performance gain. And when it comes to dual core performance, so when you're using two threads or four threads in this particular processor, the performance you'll see relative to Skylake is around about the same or even slightly less. We're talking one or 2% there. As far as graphics performance goes, it's largely the same as Skylake as well. So this isn't a laptop you're gonna be using for gaming and in general, it's not too impressive from a graphics perspective, and I would have liked to see a bit more performance improvements there, but I understand that KB Lake is essentially just a minor refresh on Skylake. However, compared to the Core M CPU that you'll find in the 12-inch MacBook, this Core i7 CPU provides almost 50% better performance, and I think that's a pretty significant gain over what you'll find in the MacBook. Where you can't really use the MacBook for tasks like video editing or, say, heavy simulation loads in MATLAB, you can certainly do that on the Core i7 7500U that's inside the ZenBook 3, and I expect you'll be able to do the same on the Core i5 equivalent. This is quite a significant performance gain and it's nothing to sneeze at if you're in the market for something that you want to use these workloads on and you're willing to use Windows 10. I understand that some people probably want to use Mac OS. You should definitely opt for the ZenBook 3 as opposed to the MacBook. With that said, while the ASUS ZenBook 3 is an attractive piece of hardware and it packs fantastic performance, I don't think it's the best ultra-thin laptop on the market today. At $1,100 US dollars for the base model and $1,600 for the upper end model, it's priced very similarly to the HP Spectre. The Spectre includes largely the same hardware as the ZenBook at these prices, and even at the upper end it's a little bit cheaper. However, the Spectre packs three USB-C ports, which I think is a really critical inclusion for everyday usability, and a much better keyboard. It's for these two reasons why I'd recommend the HP Spectre over the ZenBook 3 currently. However, that's not to say the ZenBook is a terrible piece of hardware. There's a lot to like about this laptop. It's a little bit more portable than the HP Spectre if that makes a difference to you. As far as I'm concerned, there is no reason to buy the 12-inch MacBook when the HP Spectre and ZenBook 3 exist as both offer significantly improved performance. And that's it for this review of the ASUS ZenBook 3. Don't forget to check on techspot.com for the full performance and battery life benchmarks. Links for that are in the description below. Subscribe to this YouTube channel for more video reviews coming in the future, especially now that we've got Steve making video reviews as well. He'll be including a whole bunch of PC hardware component reviews on this channel, so there'll be a lot more content to get excited about. And I hope you all enjoyed his first review here of the Samsung SSD 960 EVO. It's a fantastic product from Samsung there, so check out that video as well. Thanks everyone. This has been a TechSpot video review.